So let's take a look at uh, some non-motion commands in Elm Bradley. So we've been able to do timers and, and motor control starts and things like that. But let's look at some things that will make our programming life easier. Now, will you use these in every program? No. But be aware of them because these are just tools in the toolbox that you could utilize. And the first one that I want to point out is the, is the jump label, okay? When you program a jump label, the jump acts as an output command. So you, you would need to have something that is at the, at the end of your rung. So kind of get an output energized. And then you, in the program, you always need a, a label. Um, you, by the way, you can find all of these things here in the program control. So if you go up, if you go up here and, and, and search through, you'll see program control and you'll see all these commands right here. Some of them we're gonna talk about, not all of them we're gonna talk about, but here's the jump label and jump and here's the label. Now, I would always recommend that you jump down the program. Because remember, how does the scan cycle work with a, with an, with a PLC? It goes down and back up, and then down and back up, and down and back up. If you were to do a, a jump back to here, you create this weird looping thing that would freak the PLC out. Now in robot programming, we do that a lot. That's how we keep things uh, going. But if I'm gonna jump, I'm always gonna jump down, and I use this to jump over programs because of different, certain conditions. Maybe there's an alarm or, or a certain setup, or say you have a, a, a bite, you have a process where you do one thing and then you add something else to it. Like, I don't know, like you mill out something and then drill a hole at the top, but one part, you just want to mill it out and don't want to drill the hole. You can maybe use the jump label, jump over the drill part so that you're not drilling that part, but you can still complete the cycle. Um, so I would always jump down to bypass something, okay? And if you look here, I got a, I got a basically a, a, uh, a push button and a selector switch. So when this, when this is true, it's gonna not prevent this from executing, okay? So it's gonna prevent this rung number one from executing. Now I wanna highlight, uh, I want to highlight this right here. This command called NOP, that just means no operation. I like throwing them in with my label because it helps clear everything up for me. But you can put this on any rung. So say that you have maybe a, a command that you don't want to do anything with, um, don't want to do anything with, like an add command or something, you just want it to execute. You don't have to have like a, a jump or, or, or a OTE or something on the back end. You can always put one of these NOPs. It still won't allow you to execute. Uh, it just gives you something not to execute. So if I delete this, watch. Uh, let me uh, turn off my spotlight. Put on my mouse. If I delete this, notice I get an error, okay? But if I have it here, then it's no operation. So if you have something that you don't want, if you have like a, I, I do it with jump labels. You could do it with a, other things too. I don't even have to have this here, but watch what happens when I delete the jump label. Um, you can have this here with the, with the label the way it is, but it will give you an error. Um, if it jumps, it can't find it, okay? And I would usually keep in the same routine. It makes it easier. So that's one non-program command, and I'm gonna download this in a second to show you how to operate. So what, where this will jump over something that's active to keep it from being active, there's another command called MCRs, and you can see it right here, I think it's called Master Control Reset. This will block out anything unless this rung is active. So where a jump label will take an active rung and make it unactive, an MCR will take an inactive rung and make it active. So two different ways of going about it. Um, the, will you use this? No, but this is where when this rung is true, everything between the MCRs become active. 
And we'll demonstrate that in a second, okay? So let me go online with this. So I'm gonna download this to my processor. And you can maybe see it behind me. I know it may be a little small, but you can maybe see it behind me. But watch the bits. So if I flip the, flip the switch, you can see a red light is on. That's this here. But notice with the same switch, this light is not on because it's between the two MCRs. Now, watch what happens when I turn the switch off and hit the push button and flip the switch on. Notice the jump label light has been bypassed. Notice the inputs are still active, but the outputs are being prevented from being executed. And in this case, the MCR is active. However, watch what happens when I let go of the, situ the situation. And as I let go, this is turned off because in that split second it executed and the other light turns on. But now take a look what happens with the jump label. Both switches are on. And if I flip the switch, the red lights, the red light, the local one O data two stays on because with the jump label is preventing that command from executing. Once I let go though, it is now on. With the MCR though, with the MCR though, it is only allowing that to take place. Okay? So I hope that makes sense. The jump label will jump over a command so that you will execute. MCR will enable a command so it will execute. Um, a couple of, and, and between the two MCRs. Another other bit of commands that we're going to utilize are a jump to subroutine. Okay. Our main pro, typical practices, our main program is what we call things from. Usually we don't put logic in our main program unless it's a really small program. Usually we're going to use things like subroutines. Okay. And Subroutines are something we call from a program that will execute, but it's only called when the rung is true, okay? And in some cases, let me, in some cases, you might see something that looks like this. These are input parameters or return parameters. These are values that we can basically move between Subroutine, so an input parameter is something we send to the subroutine for processing, and the return parameter is something we send back. You don't have to utilize them, but I just want to make mention that that's what they are. All right, so you can just uh, remove the instruction parameter right there by right clicking. But you need at least this, and this will be jumping to a subroutine. And if you look over here on the side, you'll see a subroutine that was created. I'm going to create one in a second. But how you create a subroutine is I'm going to right click and add, and you'll see new routine. You can also add a tag this way. You have your option of what type of, of routine to add, you know, ladder diagram, function block structure text. We're just going to make sure it says ladder. And in this case, I'm going to call this always false, which we'll show you in a second. Okay. So always false. Okay, and it's been added. Now in my, my, and let me give you a bit. What I have here is a, is a bit that when the subroutine is called, I'm gonna turn this on, okay? Because I wanna make a point about something. And just to show you that it's working, I'm going to, I will find it. 
forgot my syntax, so. I got my syntax and I'm gonna connect it to a light. So what light, let's do this one. Okay, just to sh show you, <coughs> not a little trick, but just to show you something, okay? And what I'm going to do is, I'm going to put in another memory bit. And I'm going to put in another JSR. So again, under program and control, look for the jump to subroutine. It's there, you can remove the instruction parameters. Double click on this and you can see, oh look, there's my always false, okay? I just gotta find this bit. So let's download. Okay, so if we're gonna ignore all this, we're just not gonna do it, but watch what happens when I toggle this bit. This light turns on in the back, okay? But watch what happens when, and remember all it is, is a subroutine being called, it's green, and it's just turning on a bit. But watch what happens when I toggle the jump to subroutine. You would expect, if you're a new programmer, that the bit will turn off. However, look what happens. It's staying on, even though this has been, you know, this has been called. Remember, this command is telling it to turn on. There is no command to tell it to turn off. That's what we're going to do for this other, other subroutine. I'll show you a little trick. So I'm going to go into subroutine, <clears throat> and there's an error. But if you look under uh, program control, you're going to see a bit here. It's something called AFI, and let me toggle over this, and that's an always false bit. Something that's never will turn on in the history of anything. Really good for pro, pro, uh, program troubleshooting because it keeps a, basically allows me to bypass a wrong or double because I know it will always be false. But in this case, let me put the bit in. That will turn off that bit once I call the subroutine. Okay? So there's my subroutine. And now look, it's on. If I toggle this bit, watch what happens. It turns off. Because I'm calling the subroutine, which is calling the command to turn off that bit. And I'm turning that bit off because I'm using this always off, always false bit. So this is a good way of doing alarms, for instance. Have a subroutine turn on alarm or latch a bit on. Have another one turn it off once you call it and do everything. Um, it's just a, another little fancy trick, but I can always use one of these a, uh, um, AFQ, say I'm doing some troubleshooting and I don't want to get, I want to test something, but I don't want to delete it. I can go into program control, put in the AFQ anywhere on the rung. And now you can see if I toggle the bit, it's not calling the, it's not calling the subroutine. So I kind of forgot where I was because it was interrupted in real recording, so bear with me. Um, but you can see this memory bit will turn this, uh, will, will turn on, execute the false thing. All right, so once, once more, toggle, uh, toggle the bit. You can see that no matter how much I toggle, this is always false is there, and you'll see in the, in the warnings, AFI detected meaning just watch out because it's for troubleshooting purposes. And the last command that we're gonna do, so we've done, a, we've done the jump label, we've done the NOP, we've done the MCR, we've done always false, and we've done JSR. So the last one I wanna do is one that if you look in your tags, you won't see it, but it's always there. 
and it's a bit, and if you notice, there's nothing up in here, up here, but it's another little trick. So say you have a, you know, so let me um, go into this. So instead of doing this, I'm gonna put in a, a timer, okay? And I'll do a retentive timer. And I'll just make it for some amount, all right? You know, oops, sorry. Okay, but notice this retentive timer, so the time stays. Um, what happens though, if when things begin of the day, or say you go from, you, you have to turn the line down for something and you start it back up and the time is still there and it's tracking something. Do you want to remember every time that you need to reset your timer? Well, there's a way to reset everything on the first scan of the PLC when it transitions from program mode to run mode. And that is simply by putting in S colon FS. And you can see up there, you see F colon SS equals first scan bit. It's a status bit that says it's in the first scan or not. And in this case, I can, on the first scan, reset this. So I'm just gonna put in a random accumulated value, okay? And I want you to notice that once I go download, you'll see that this will go to zero in like that. Once I, hold on, no, I'm gonna move, scroll this up so you can see, but watch. I'm gonna go to run mode and see what happens. This resets to zero. Well, maybe it's an abnormality. I'm gonna delete this always false bit because I wanna demonstrate something. So excuse me for a second. So we got our always, you know, our always on bit. So I'm gonna to toggle the bit to call it. And you can see it adding, 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 and I'm gonna to toggle the bit to stop it. And oh shoot, our line crashed. So now we're in program mode, okay? We fixed our line, we're back into run mode. It's reset. So, Use this, use this when you're programming with counters and timers and when we get to control tags because this will reset and make sure everything's the same every time. Because um, you don't want these uh, ghost counts or don't want, don't want these timer counts all the time, but utilizing a first scan bit allows you to do this or clear bits or turn things off. So again, this is everything, these are these fun little tricks that you can start utilizing and that's what we're gonna be doing in labs. So thank you for your time. And I hope this was helpful.